There's a type of malware that keeps me on edge. Every time I download something, every new email sender I interact with, it's called Info Stealer Malware. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you get hit with some. So what is Info Stealer Malware? It's a type of evil software that's designed to steal information from a victim's device without them knowing about it. Usernames, passwords, credit card information, cookies, session tokens, and so much more. Now these are all things you do not want getting into the wrong hands. So how does it work? Well, in most cases, InfoStealer malware is hidden within seemingly harmless files, like some software you downloaded, a Chrome extension, an Office document, stuff like that. And once you interact with it, the software begins to monitor and gather information discreetly in the background. And bad guys put a lot of effort, social engineering, into trying to get you to click on it. Fake Netflix campaigns, DHL, Apple, Microsoft 365, even fake YouTube emails. Few people have been caught out with that lately. Well, and before I go any further, I need to tell you about Flare. Intel professionals like me have to have the right tools for the job in order to help reduce risk. And that's exactly what Flare does because it enables you to see your attack surface and deny attackers the intelligence advantage. And it can do this because it's actively monitoring the internet, not just the deep and dark web, but the clear web as well. If somebody in your company posts API keys into a GitHub repository, you get an alert in Flare. If an employee's leaked credentials are put on sale, you get an alert in Flare. And it's really fast. I got alerts set up to email and Slack, but it works with all the best collaboration tools and it is super easy to integrate into an existing security stack. In under 30 minutes, I was up and running. Flare monitors things like ransomware, data leak sites, telegram channels where bad actors sell data to each other, dark web cybercrime forums, and so much more. It also translates languages so that you can read a post in a Russian cybercrime forum, for example. And it even has AI functionality that gives you context around what it is that you're seeing. So you don't actually have to read the logs per se. It'll use AI to analyze what's going on in those posts. And you just read the little paragraph that the AI gives you for all the context that you could ever need. It's really cool. There's a link in the description that helps support the channel. Thank you, Flair, for sponsoring this video. Now, let's go take a look at some InfoStealer logs. By the way, these logs are anonymized, so don't try to make use of anything that you see here. If you pause this and try and use bank details or passwords and things, it won't work. So this is what the bad guys get after they install their malware on your computer. This is the Redline Stealer. This is one of the most infamous of all of the Info Stealers. Highly prevalent, very capable. And this is what you get if you're a threat actor, and you sign up to use the Redline Stealer, you get access to their malware, you infect someone, and then you end up getting stuff like this sent back to you. Now, these are all of the files and folders here. Again, fully anonymized, so none of this is real, okay? Let's just have a look at this one, process list. So this is a list of all of the processes running on the computer, which has been infected and the threat actor gets to see it. They get the ID number of the process, what the application is called, and any command line arguments that are running along with it. Now that's incredibly useful. If you infect an organization with Redline Stealer, you can learn about what antivirus they're using. You would hope that antivirus might pick it up, but sometimes it doesn't. But you would see that here, you would see CrowdStrike listed here, for example. Now, sometimes when people run these command line arguments, they pass passwords within those. So that's another way of losing passwords because you've got the command that's running like an SSH command, for example, the bad guy would then pick that up. Let's have a look at this one. This is the user information. All very useful here. Look, antiviruses, hardware configuration, UAC controls, the username, the hardware ID, and the IP address. Installed browsers, as you can see here, we get Internet Explorer at this location. You get the version number as well, Microsoft Edge and its version number. That's super useful to have because you can then go and look at the exploit database for exploits against this version of Microsoft Edge. We get a list of all of the installed software. As you can see, we got ExpressVPN, McAfee, Microsoft Edge, Steam, Rockstar Games, somebody likes GTA. 
and all of the version numbers for these as well. And that is the useful part. Passwords.txt, I wonder what's in here. Here we go. Web pages, usernames, passwords. We've even got Discord. So Discord tokens, you can refresh your Discord token by changing your password and it just generates a new token. But this is your unique token. Never give your token away to anyone. It's used in the back end of the API level. But if you pass your token to someone, they can then use it and log in as you, which isn't ideal. And the same goes for cookies. Look, here we got a whole bunch of stuff. I know it looks a bit crazy, but you got Bing, we got MSN, LinkedIn, UPS, Bank of America, and threat actors have all of the right tools at their disposal to make use of these cookies and tokens to gain access to your accounts. So it's pretty dangerous stuff. It even gets access to all of your autofill data inside of Edge. As you can see, you got an Amex card with some numbers, the security code, the address, social security number, mother's maiden name, secret questions, things like that. And if you're wondering, how do you get access to this red line stealer thing? Where do you go? Do you go to GitHub or how does it work? There are versions of it on GitHub that you can see. I wouldn't recommend tampering with them though, because a lot of malware like that ends up having other malware inside of it. So stay well clear unless you know exactly what you're doing. You come to Telegram and you go to Redline Seller and you can see here in this bot, you can buy a subscription to Redline Stealer or buy access to private logs. Let's click start. Here we go. Welcome to Redline Market. Your balance, support, check payment, private Redline logs, Redline Stealer. Let's click this one. Redline Stealer, collecting from browsers all the things that we talked about. If we click Redline Panel, here we go. We get all these little screenshots. This is what it looks like. This is the UI on the back end. So we saw the log data, but the logs ultimately come through here. And as you can see, all the IP addresses, operating systems, build IDs, just an incredible amount of data. Let's go back. One month of the subscription is $150. Pro version, which is lifetime, is $900. And if we check out the private red line logs, they have 4 million logs in the cloud. Airbnb, Booking, Microsoft, Apple, credit cards, Netflix, Amazon, I mean, Google, YouTube, it's all here, right? And that's all the prices. And we can click support and get customer support. It's crazy. Welcome to the world of cybercrime. You might be wondering, how do I prevent an info stealer from impacting me? Unfortunately, there is no perfect solution. Use antivirus software, maybe even endpoint detection or network monitoring software. Be careful about what you install is probably a big part of it. And audit what you have already installed and maybe even remove things that you don't need anymore. Try to avoid email as much as possible. And what I mean by that is if Netflix emails you saying that you need to update your payment information, just log into Netflix and check that there. You don't need to click the link in the email and put yourself at risk. Just avoid clicking links in emails where possible. Browsers and password managers these days, they all monitor for breached passwords, so do some of that. But if you're on the corporate side, you will probably want something a little bit more like what you saw from Flare to do that at scale. So yeah, that is Info Stealer Malware, the world we live in. All right, I'm gonna go hit the gym. See ya.